Just wanted to share tips with you in case there's anything that you're like, oh, I can do that. Several years getting to this point, we started a lot of these things long before inflation was an issue. I don't know what that's exactly called. Is it always tried to go for fresh? Really enjoy being involved in our finances. Hard to be communicated in this video. share bits and pieces of motherhood and how I started my home. Today we are doing part two to how we live on a single modest income. In the last video, I shared a lot of the ways that we live frugally in order to make living on a single modest income work. I mostly touched on things that we don't buy and if you haven't watched that video yet, I will link it down below so you can give that a watch as well. In this video, I'm sharing with you some of the things that we do buy or some of the alternative things that we use to be more efficient with our income. Like I said, I will link part one down below. Before I get started, I just wanted to say that I got a couple messages on the last video um, just wanting me to put some disclaimers out there that um, there are women who have to work. Maybe your husband is disabled and you're working or for whatever the reason may be, you are a working mama. Of course I recognize that there are women who have to work, but that's not something that I personally can speak into because I'm not a working mom. I, I stay at home with my kids and I see that as a job as well. It does not generate income. And so that's why these videos I believe are necessary because there's so many moms who stay home, but I feel like a lot of us carry a financial uh, burden to either not want to waste money or whatever the case may be. Um, there is always that when you're staying at home, you're not making money. And these are ways that while I don't generate an income, I'm able to do these things and that really helps me be able to contribute financially because that's something that I do enjoy doing. I really enjoy being involved in our finances. And I feel like with these simple switches and things that I can do in our home, I've been able to be involved financially. It's just something that means a lot to me. I guess I just wanna say, these are things that I do. These are things that help my family, but these aren't for everyone. And so this will be up to you, I suppose, as you hear um, kind of the, the, the things that we do, maybe maybe these are things that you want to do for your family and maybe this sparks ideas of other things you want to do for your family to help be involved in the financial aspect of your family. With that being said, let's jump into part two of how we live on a single modest income. The first thing that I have done is I have simplified the products in my home. And I'm talking about the products that I use to clean my home. I personally have found that all of my cleaning needs can be met by using one singular low or non-tox cleaner concentrate, vinegar, and baking soda. Those are the three things that I use to clean every surface in my home. For me, each spray bottle that I make um, out of the cleaner concentrate that I use is $1.50. So that's what we have switched to. I also use the same cleaner concentrate to mop our floors, clean our toilets, you name it. I use it for that. Keeping our cleaning products very simplified <laughs> helps me <laughs> mentally. I'm not grabbing the comet and the awesome and the fabuloso and all these different things. I grab two things, maybe three things, and I go clean whatever it is that I need to clean. And the more complicated something is, the less I want to do it. So for me, this works super well. The second thing that I do is I make our own hand soap. I use a foaming hand pump, half of it with pure unscented Castile soap, and the other half I do with water. I mix it up, sometimes I'll add some essential oils to it, and that's our foaming hand soap. Hand soap is one of those things that I tend to forget about. I don't notice whenever hand soap is running low. I only notice whenever it's gone. I don't have to worry about running out if we're having guests over and, not, and them not having anything to like wash their hands with. That's been extremely helpful for me in my otherwise forgetful mama brain. Number three, we do not buy dishwasher powder. I don't know what that's exactly called. Is it dishwashing soap, dishwasher powder? I'm not sure. The soap that goes in the dishwasher, dishwashing powder. We don't buy that, <laughs> but we do use our dishwasher every single night. And so the soap that I use for that, I make. I have all the supplies on hand. It was, and now let me say this, it was an investment to get all of the supplies to keep on hand. 
that was an upfront investment to have bulk everything that I need to make our dishwashing detergent. Ah, that's the word, dishwashing detergent. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. Oops. So yes, it was an investment to buy in bulk all of the supplies that I could need. Keeping all the ingredients on hand, I'm always able to just go and make more dishwashing powder if we need it. This is a recipe that I've been using for several years now. It works really well. I wrote it on my website and I will link that down below so that you can check out that recipe as well. So those are things that we do buy. We do buy in bulk the things that I need to make our hand soap, our dishwashing soap, all of those things we buy in bulk. In turn, we then don't buy hand soap or dishwashing powder, um, but we do buy the ingredients that we need to make those things. As a more naturally minded mom, it kind of was overwhelming at first to think about building a wellness cabinet. Some of the more, ho more holistic options can be a little bit more pricey. I honestly slowly added to my medicine cabinet. So I do keep a variety of natural remedies, herbal tinctures, homeopathy, essential oils. I also keep more modern medicine options on hand. I really like the brand Genexa because they are just medicine. There's no fillers. It's just medicine. So in the event that we need um, modern medicine, I have that on hand. In my medicine cabinet, it's stuff I'm gonna run to first it's the natural remedies the homeopathy um, but in the event that we need modern medicine it's there I just really like to keep things simple and I've got it pretty well narrowed down to the things that I'm comfortable using for my children and for myself and my husband this also means that I have invested a great deal of time into learning how those remedies will benefit my family and exactly how to use them so um, that's something that I think is really important to do is not just run out and get all of this natural homeopathic remedy stuff um, if you don't know how to use it I think it's really important to have that stuff on hand but also know how to use it so that you're more likely to run to it or otherwise it's just gonna sit there and it's gonna be a waste of money learning how to use that stuff has been extremely beneficial in keeping our supply very simplified Along those same lines, I keep the supplements that I take extremely simple. I take the same few things every single day and I rely on our food for the rest. I keep it simple, I keep it high quality, and it works so well for me. When you start a health journey and you start looking online, there are endless supplements that are listed that could potentially support this in your body or help you with this or that. Um, and it really helped me to narrow that down to what exactly my body needs. So having that narrowed down keeps it simple. I'm able to buy less items but a higher quality, if that makes sense. A huge chunk of our budget does go to high quality food. This does not mean that it's always organic, but I always try to go for fresh. So instead of buying a lot of convenience foods, frozen foods, pre-made foods. I'm buying the ingredients and I'm making the food myself. As a mom, it is my joy to make whole nourishing meals for my family. So we do invest quite a bit in um, the time that I spend in the kitchen and the food that we eat. We do view food as an investment. We want it to really benefit our bodies. We really like to focus on buying whole ingredients, keeping it simple in the kitchen, um, and just making meals that are going to nourish your body. We do buy fruit bars or fruit leather. We buy applesauce and yogurt, but I buy them in the big containers and I put them into a smaller, reusable, squeezy container. I'll link them below. I have the Hakka brand and um, I really like them. They're easy to use. I feel like they're pretty easy to clean, but that's what my toddler typically has her yogurt or her applesauce in, especially if, we're, if she needs a snack and we're getting in the car. I'll just use a funnel, throw it in there, and then we're good to go. Last but not least, we use what we have. We use the food we have, the supplies we have, the products that we have. We just use what we have. We don't enjoy spending on unnecessary items. We are both wired that way, so it does make our low spend uh, lifestyle a little bit easier that we are both on the same page. That's not to say that we never spend on items that we technically could do without. What I'm trying to communicate is that it's easy to get caught in habits of consumerism without even realizing it. These are just some simple ways that we find freedom as a family living on a single modest income, especially in 
the world that we're living in right now everything is just shooting up in price and i i want my heart to be communicated in this video i personally find a lot of joy in finding different ways that our family can find freedom and living on a single modest income i hope that me sharing these things is a bit of an encouragement to you it, we started a lot of these things long before inflation was an issue and it's just something that as a family we've enjoyed and it's it has ended up helping us out um, through inflation um, just not having to buy those extra things it's it's not a shock to the system for us because we've been doing it for quite a while for me it's fun it's really fun for me to find different and creative ways to do things and like i said i really like to be involved in our finances and i like to have as much freed up for quality food or for fun times as a family or for investment um, as possible i just wanted to add also i have spent several years getting to this point of all the things that I shared in the first video and all the things that I just shared with you in this video. This was not an overnight thing. Um, it took some time to get used to a slower lifestyle and just being intentional to make time to do these things. Um, so I recognize that it's not an overnight switch, but I just wanted to share tips with you in case there's anything that you're like, oh, I can do that. Um, then that's great. If it's just one thing, then I will feel like this video had some purpose. I also thought it would be good to show some of the behind the scenes of kind of the the effort that can go into living on a single income. I feel like some people see a family living on a single income and they're like, ugh, oh, you know, how lucky. And yes, oh my gosh, I am so blessed to be home with my kids. But um, it's not without a lot of sacrifice, it's not without a lot of work. So anyways, if you have some tips on how you like to save money and be a little bit more frugal, put them in the comments below. I would love to read them. I'm always looking for new ideas. Like I said, it's fun for me. I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Also, if this is the kind of content that you enjoy, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos, and give this video a thumbs up. Mm -hmm.